Hi, I'm Amelia Santanella with WCCO-TV. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Safe at Home, which is a program offered by the Minnesota Secretary of State's office in collaboration with local victim service providers. It's designed to help those who fear for their safety to establish a confidential address. Many participants are survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking, but others are in the program for professional reasons. Some, for example, fear for their family's safety because they work in law enforcement or within the criminal justice system. You may have been or may currently be in an unsafe home environment. This program may be an important part of your overall safety plan, helping you to be safe in your home, at your work, or at school. The intent of Safe at Home is to allow program participants to go about their lives interacting with public and private entities, such as county social workers and cell phone companies, without leaving traces of where they really live in an attempt to keep those they fear from locating them. This program is needed now more than ever, given all of the data that's available about people on the internet and the extent to which companies share data with one another. The Safe at Home concept is simple and proven if fewer people who know where you live, work, or go to school, you will be safer. Safe at Home assigns an alternate address that you can use for all these purposes, and the use of the assigned alternate address helps keep your real address confidential. Let's start with what Safe at Home is not. Safe at Home does not help people find housing. Safe at Home does not issue fake addresses. Although participation in Safe at Home can and does help witnesses feel safer, Safe at Home is not a witness protection program. This program can help if you choose to use it effectively. In this brief video, we'll outline the key program components. How can Safe at Home help? Who is eligible? Practical considerations, including how to enroll and how you will get your mail. Most importantly, details about how Safe at Home protects your address, your responsibilities and obligations, and the next step if Safe at Home is right for you. So, how can Safe at Home help you? Safe at Home helps you keep your home, work, and school addresses confidential. It does this by assigning you a substitute address, a specific post office box. Under Minnesota law, you're allowed to use the assigned address for all purposes and both public entities, like county social services, and private entities, like your cell phone company. They have to accept your assigned address as your actual address. Because you use your assigned address for all of your interactions with others, your mail goes to that address. Safe at Home picks up your mail for you at that address and forwards your mail to you at your actual address without charge. As a Safe at Home participant, you are allowed to use your assigned address for virtually everything, even for important documents like your driver's license. When you do this, you will not have to provide driver and vehicle services with your actual address. Safe at Home can receive legal documents for you on your behalf. This allows you to be involved with court proceedings without disclosing your actual physical address to the other party or to the court. Safe at Home has worked with many companies to establish the safest procedures possible so you can receive services like electric and water in the safest way. As a participant, you will receive information about how to do this, as well as direct assistance from the Safe at Home office if you encounter difficulties using your Safe at Home address. Safe at Home allows you to vote without anyone other than Safe at Home staff knowing your actual address. Safe at Home can assist with the transferring of school records so your child's old school will not know your child's new school. This assistance severs a paper trail that your abuser could potentially follow. Lastly, if you use the program effectively, Safe at Home will allow you to live in one place. If you had to continually move in order to keep your location a secret, participation in Safe at Home will help. You can stay in one place and feel safe. To be eligible to enroll in Safe at Home, individuals must reside in Minnesota and be someone who fears for their safety, such as a survivor of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking, or someone who has safety concerns due to their profession, including those who work in law enforcement or within the criminal justice system. Eligible people enroll in Safe at Home with the help of a Safe at Home application assistant. You will determine together if the program should be a part of your personal safety plan. First, Complete the enrollment paperwork. Once Safe at Home receives the completed paperwork, you will be enrolled within two business days. 
Your enrollment will be valid for four years unless you choose to withdraw or your participation is canceled. You will have the option to renew your Safe at Home participation at the end of four years. New participants receive a welcome information packet that includes a Safe at Home participation card for each person listed on the application. Sign your card and always carry it with you. You will often want to present it when interacting with area businesses and city, county, and state agencies. Your card has your name and your new Safe at Home address, P.O. Box 17370 in St. Paul. All Safe at Home participants share the same P.O. Box, so an important part of your address is your lot number. This is what distinguishes your household's mail from that of the other participants. If your mail doesn't have your lot number on it, your mail may be delayed or may never get to you. The card also has a telephone number of the Safe at Home office and the Minnesota law requiring others to accept your Safe at Home address. As a new Safe at Home participant, your next step is to notify everyone, including your bank, utilities, schools, family and friends of your new Safe at Home address, and that all of your mail should be sent to your Safe at Home P.O. Box address. Remind them to include your lot number. Often, depending upon your relationship with a company or agency, you'll want to explain that you're in Safe at Home and that you have greater safety needs than most of their clients. This will help you and them figure out if there are other things that can be done to safeguard any information they may have about you. At no time can anyone require you to disclose why you are in Safe at Home. It is none of their business and you don't have to tell them. Some companies, especially utility companies, have established special procedures just for Safe at Home participants. Your information packet will explain how to take advantage of these opportunities. Remember, a company can't help you and doesn't have to follow any of these special procedures unless you tell them that you're in Safe at Home. If you are working with a company that is not specifically mentioned in your Safe at Home information packet and you're unsure about how to interact with them, call the Safe at Home office for help. Using your Safe at Home address is not difficult. The Secretary of State's office has worked hard to educate the public about this program. In some cases, companies will just accept your Safe at Home address without further explanation. In other cases, since it's still a relatively new program, they may not be familiar with Safe at Home. You may need to educate them about it. If you ever run into trouble, call Safe at Home and the staff will try to help. Never disclose your actual address without calling the Safe at Home office first. Remember, once you are in Safe at Home, you should use your Safe at Home address for everything. I just need to check out those books, but I need to make a library card. I'm in the Safe at Home program. Here's my ID. Okay. I have my Safe at Home card. Okay, that takes care of any problems we had. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. What can I do for you folks? Hi, I'm Jeannie and this is Joseph and we're here to register for school. Well, welcome. Thank you. All right, well, if you're registering, the first thing I need is your home address, please. Okay, well, um, I don't have to give you my home address because we're in the Safe at Home program. I haven't heard of Safe at Home. Um, Safe at Home is a program where we don't have to use our home address. We use our Safe at Home, Safe at home address for everything we do. These are our registration cards. This is mine and this is Joseph's. All right, I think and I've heard of this program. If you have any questions, you can call the office. Fantastic. You know, I think what I'm gonna do is make copies of these cards. I need to know which school district you reside in and then um, I need your safe at home address. Okay. All right, great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm in the safe at home program. Fill this out. I need to make a copy of this. Sure. Thank you. As a Safe at Home participant, you can still get government assistance with things like food and medical care. In Minnesota, this is typically done through your county. You'll need to disclose the county in which you live to your county social worker or intake worker. You cannot be required to disclose your actual address. They must accept your Safe at Home address. If you seek federal assistance, such as Section 8 housing assistance, You'll need to abide by any federal laws in order to receive this assistance, and this includes giving your actual physical address if it's required. 
While you are in at Safe at Home, all of your mail should go to your Safe at Home P.O. Box address in St. Paul because that's the only address you should be giving to people. You do not pick your mail up at the P.O. Box in St. Paul. Safe at Home staff will do that for you because all participants share the same post office box. All the mail is picked up by staff at the same time. It's then sorted according to lot number, and that's why it's so important to have your lot number on your mail. Your mail is put in a brown envelope and forwarded to you at your residential address free of charge. It's important to note that Safe at Home only forwards first class mail. And to keep the cost of administering the program minimal, Safe at Home does not forward magazines, catalogs, or junk mail. Additionally, Safe at Home will only forward two types of packages to you, packages sent by government agency and medicines. This limitation is in place for your safety as well as for the safety of Safe at Home staff. If Safe at Home forwarded packages, abusers could put a tracking device in one to try to follow it to your home. This could put you in danger. In addition, the staff of Safe at Home programs in other states have been threatened because they are some of the only people who know how to find the participants. Safe at Home recognizes that an abuser could potentially hide a tracking device in a package in order to locate the Safe at Home office or follow program staff. So even though it is inconvenient, this no packages policy is in place for very good reasons. You'll find other ideas about how to receive packages in your welcome information packet when you join Safe at Home. Although Safe at Home typically picks up your mail each business day and forwards it to you that same day, your mail will be slightly delayed in reaching you. Please remember this when paying bills and responding to timely notices. Because Safe at Home is your agent to receive mail while you are a participant, when your mail is picked up at the post office box by Safe at Home staff, it's just as if you picked it up. Your mail is considered received by you. If you're using the program properly and for your own protection, the only mail you should receive at your home is mail forwarded to you by Safe at Home. Safe at Home knows that participants in the program have extreme safety needs and goes to great lengths to protect your information. Even the office scenes depicted in this video are simulated. Only the immediate program staff has access to any information about participants in the program. No one else who works for the Office of the Secretary of State knows anything about participants in the program. Not your names, not anything. In fact, Safe at Home is run with the same underlying principle that program participants are advised to live by, which is, if fewer people know a participant's actual address, the participant will be safer. Likewise, the Secretary of State's office believes that only a few people should actually know where the Safe at Home office is located. This rule is taken very seriously. In fact, the location of the Safe at Home office is considered security information with the state and only a few of the staff at the Secretary of State's office even know where the Safe at Home office is located. At the Safe at Home office, there are multiple security measures in place. Your address is kept safe. It is either in a locked filing cabinet or on a computer that is not even connected to the internet. That's what you call hack proof. Safe at Home will never disclose any information about you without your written consent, even if you ask them to. If you're having a problem getting your Safe at Home address accepted and want Safe at Home to talk to the company for you, no specifics will be discussed with them until you give your permission in writing with your signature. Safe at Home won't even discuss your own participation with you over the telephone until you've answered a series of questions that verify your identity. As you can tell, safeguarding your personal information is a top priority of Safe at Home. But there are three rare cases in which Safe at Home would disclose information about you without your specific written consent. One, if someone calls and provides your name and lot number, Safe at Home will tell them whether or not you are in the program and nothing more. This exception is in place to help participants who interact with companies that want to verify someone's program participation. This rarely happens. If someone tries to ask additional questions about you, Safe at Home will refuse to answer them. If someone calls the Safe at Home office and attempts to discuss you without giving your lot number, staff will be unresponsive to their questions and the caller will be given no information. Two, if Safe at Home receives a court order that requires them to disclose information about you, they would be required to do so. In most cases, Safe at Home will attempt to notify you if this happens. Three, if law enforcement needs a participant's actual address, there's a special procedure that involves going through the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension that they can use to request it. 
Safe at Home has the discretion to choose not to comply with the request. Other than these three cases, Safe at Home will never disclose anything about you without your written consent. And you can never give Safe at Home written consent to disclose your actual address to anyone, even if you really want them to tell someone where you live. Safe at Home must always know where you live and if any of your contact information changes, including your phone number. If you move without letting Safe at Home know, you may be canceled from the program. In addition, you must promptly respond to any legal documents that you receive. Safe at Home is your agent for service of process. This means that they can accept legal documents on your behalf so that you can be involved in legal proceedings without disclosing your actual address. However, it also means that when Safe at Home receives legal papers on your behalf, it's as if you receive them. The documents are always forwarded to you promptly. You cannot try to say that you never receive them. Safe at Home keeps track of legal documents that go through their office and the dates documents are forwarded to participants. If you're the subject of a criminal matter when you join Safe at Home, you're required to disclose that to Safe at Home. This means when you join the program, if you're being charged with a crime or a county attorney or city attorney's office is considering charging you or any of your co-applicants, you must tell Safe at Home. The prosecuting office will be notified of your new Safe at Home address and how to contact you. They will not be told your actual physical address. Finally, if you're under criminal justice system management, such as probation, and it has residency related conditions, you must provide your actual address to your supervisor if they request it. Please note that Safe at Home is a good safety strategy, but it's not a good fit for everyone. Safe at Home is most effective if you are about to move to a new address or have just moved. If you're already established where you live when you join Safe at Home, there are already records that tie your name to that address. Safe at Home can help prevent that going forward, but cannot require that companies or agencies erase information that they already have about you. If you're already established at your address and don't want to move, it's likely that it will be fairly easy for someone to find your address. Safe at Home probably won't be a very effective strategy in this case. In addition, when you're in Safe at Home, you have to be willing to tell people you're in the program, to show them your Safe at Home card, and to tell everyone that you live, work, and go to school with. Some participants report they initially have some discomfort with this, but they quickly adapt. If this is something you know you'll have a lot of difficulty with, joining Safe at Home is not for you. Remember, as a Safe at Home participant, you need to make sure as few people as possible really know where you live. This means having to stop and think before inviting your children's friends over or ordering a pizza. You may have to think creatively. If you get stumped, talk to your victim advocate about your safety plan or call the Safe at Home office. You can't receive magazines or most packages through Safe at Home. Although Safe at Home turns your mail around very quickly, all of your mail will be delayed. This means that you'll have less time to pay your bills or respond to other items. If you join Safe at Home, everyone else in your household should join the program too. This is the only way to ensure Safe at Home is an effective safety strategy. Doesn't do any good for you to give out the Safe at Home address if you live with another person who's actually giving out the actual physical address that you're trying to keep a secret. It would only be a matter of time before your secret is well known. Reminding you of these limitations is not meant to deter you from joining. Rather, it's to help you consider whether joining will be effective in keeping you safe. Consider your safety needs and whether this is the right step for you to take. John, thanks for coming in today. Um, this is all correct. Is this your actual residence where you live? Yes. Okay, and do you have a safety plan? No. Why don't you and I talk a little bit today about developing a safety plan for sure. you? Sure, sure. So we'll get started with that then. If you choose to become a Safe at Home participant, your application assistant will walk you through the application paperwork. Here are a few tips when filling out your application. You must provide the address where you live right now, not where you hope to move to or where you want to receive your mail. You must include a telephone number on your application. Be sure to fill out all of the required parts of the application. If there's something wrong with your application, Safe at Home will contact you using the number that you provide. When your application is complete, it's mailed to Safe at Home. Expect to receive your welcome information packet and a call from Safe at Home within one week. You give us strength and hope. 
We are not just struggling, wandering victims. I'm so glad this program exists. Thank you all so much for your time, concern, and conscientious handling of all the details, making my life more safe. Being able to feel like I can wake up and feel like I can and will be okay, my little one is safe. I used to say before finding safe at home that I was in hiding and would feel unprotected. Now I feel more protected.